Hello and welcome to part 3 of downloading and installing PrestaShop. In this third video we're actually going to start the installation process so you can get your store up and running. But I just want to review what we've accomplished so far. We've already done steps 3, 4, 5, and 6 which is to download, unzip, and upload all of your files to your web host into the folder that you chose to upload them into. And then we've also uh, changed the permissions of these particular file folders. So we went through and set permissions to 755 for all of these folders. Some were recursive and some were not. Now the next uh, step we took was to actually go back and in part two we created a database, a MySQL database using your web host. In my case it was Bluehost and I showed you how easy it was to set up a MySQL database and now we have a database name that we will be using during the uh, installation process. So we've done step one. Now step two might be confusing to a lot of people because you're going to be looking to do something that you probably will not have to do. This GD library functionality is generally controlled by your host and most hosts will have the library turned on. If they don't, you're not going to be able to do anything about it other than call the host and ask them if they will uh, turn this GD library functionality on. And it's really pretty simple. And some of them, um, some of them may have an issue with them, but most of them probably will not. So if you have a host that will not turn on the GD library functionality, you could have a problem and you might need to look for a different host. But that's probably going to be pretty rare. So don't even worry about this for right now and I will show you during the installation process how to actually confirm that you do have GD library functionality. So we're not going to worry about that until we get to that point and then I'll show you what to look for. Alright, so let's move on to the actual installation process. Okay, so let's go down to step 7 and it says in web browser launch the installer by adding install to your shop's URL. So the example is uh, the HTTP my uh, www.mysite.com so in my case it's going to be www.prestatraining.com and then I need the rest of my path in order to get down to the install folder and I don't remember exactly what that path is so I'm just going to go ahead and look that up again and I see I've got my Presta Training and Presta Training Demo and then I had a separate file folder for my version and then here is my install folder. So what you can do is go up here and just copy this. You're going to have to mess around with this just a little bit but I'll show you how to do that. Let's jump back over to our internet browser and open up a new window and now I'm going to paste this in here. Now there's a couple things. First off you want to get rid of the public HTML but let's just replace that with an HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and then we have www.prestatraining.com so essentially you need to have the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and then www.yoursite.com and then you just go through your path which in my case was press the training demo forward slash 1.3.4.0 hyphen press to shop forward slash install and that's exactly what they're looking for here just as a reminder it's this file structure and we need to have the install folder as the very last item okay so let's go ahead and go to that site and see what happens now you should see this screen come up if you did it correctly. So let's go ahead and just browse down this uh, screen for just a moment and what we're going to be doing is kind of verifying that we've got the permissions set up on the folders and subfolders correctly and uh, this installation process is going to verify whether we have the correct version of PHP on the host and then we also get to choose a few things like our language and uh, email installation and then that that type of thing so for me I'm an English speaker so I'm gonna go ahead and choose this language as my default you can choose French or Spanish depending on um, 
on what language is your native language and we do want the full installation of the PrestaShop e-commerce solution so we'll go ahead and click next now do you remember when I talked about GD library functionality this is where you're going to find out first off if you have that set up and installed correctly on your host which the host would do you don't do that and then also it's going to check a bunch of other stuff such as the correct PHP version uh, whether or not your file permissions are set correctly and whether or not you actually did go and change the file permissions or get them set correctly for all of those file folders that we had looked at earlier so if you follow it along in the videos pretty much everything should be good at least in this section right here with the permissions on the files and folders both the non-recursive section and this is the recursive section and then also some of these things that are somewhat beyond your control such as the correct version of PHP and the GD library so remember where I said that my host already had it set up that's why it's uh, a green check mark if for some reason you have issues with your host not having the correct version of PHP or not having the GD library or not having MySQL support on or any of those things there will be a red checkbox here or a red X and uh, or if you've got your permissions wrong or you didn't set them up on your file folders so right now I've got green check marks all the way through and um, the optional setup it's, all these things are great too so if there's a mistake you can go back and fix it and then you can just click this refresh these settings and then it will keep checking to be sure that um, you've corrected it if not it'll stay red and then you've got to figure out how how to go ahead and correct that so hopefully you followed along very closely and if you did you shouldn't have any trouble so let's go ahead and click next on this screen we're going to actually configure the database so I'm going to ask you to remember or bring out the paperwork that you saved when we actually set up the MySQL database so the first thing you're going to want to see is right here at the top it asks for a database server name now most of the time your database server name is going to be a local host and I guess that is that's something that we did not actually cover when we did the database setup for the MySQL database but I happen to know that mine is localhost and almost everybody's is going to be localhost so you can try that or if you really run into trouble uh, either email or give your web host a call and they should be able to help you with that very very quickly so now the database name that is not PrestaShop that is one of the names that you set up or that is the name that you set up for your database and I'm pulling out my paper because I didn't remember what it was right away so I'm gonna type that in and it's uh, really easy to make a mistake so be sure that you've got your spelling correct just double checking and that looks good and then the login the login is the same as the user that you set up for your MySQL database so for me I'm gonna put in the user that I added to that database and once again spelling is critical and then my password that I created when I set the database up for that user and then if everything goes well, I can click verify now and it should work. And thank goodness I typed it correctly. So uh, if you encounter some frustration there where it says your database is not connected, like let's, I'm just going to change one little quick thing here. So that's incorrect now. I'm going to hit verify now and it says the uh, database server was not found. But it's just a simple uh, typing error. So I'm going to correct it, verify now, and it found it again. So that uh, it can be really frustrating if you don't have your information or if you misspell something so uh, three very or four very critical things first off you need to know for sure that your database server name is localhost or uh, call your web host to find out what it is your database name is you created that when you set up your MySQL database so you should know that you also created your login uh, which is the user that you authorized to use your MySQL database and then you also set up a password so you know for sure these three things here and then this one may be somewhat in question but that's easy to figure out through your web host if localhost does not work alright so let's move down just a little bit here uh, if you like you can actually change 
the table prefix. I don't really have a need to, so I'm just going to leave it as a PS underscore. And then your next question is, do you want to set this up as a full mode or a simple mode? Uh, because I'm going to do this as a demonstration, and a lot of the things I want to teach you involve adding and removing things, I'm just going to use the full mode installation. Uh, if you really know what you're doing, and you just want to start with a bare bones store and add the modules that you know you want to add, you can do a simple mode. And that basically just is where you don't install any of the modules and then you add them manually, which sometimes can be easier than deleting all the modules that PrestaShop installs when you do a full mode installation. Now we're going to skip this email delivery and setup. I actually like to set that up manually in the store once I've got the store set up. So I'm not going to do this test email here either. And I've had lots of problems with this in the past. It just doesn't seem to work. So um, we're going to go ahead and go on to the next screen. OK, on this screen, this is where we're going to basically set up uh, our merchant admin information. And this will be carried over into the store once we actually get to the uh, completion of the installation. So go ahead and set up your shop name. For me, it's going to be Presta Training. I think I'm going to capitalize the T. And my default country is the United States. I don't currently have a shop logo. I'm actually working on creating one right now, but. Um, for right now the shop logo I'm just going to use the default press to shop now this is something that you want to pay attention to though when you create your shop logo the recommended size is 230 pixels wide by 75 pixels tall I think if you actually use uh, Mozilla's plugin Firebug and you check the details of this it's a little bit different there is a slightly smaller than this but just be sure you don't go bigger than that so 230 by 75 is about the maximum size you want to use unless you want to um, change your CSS settings and mess around with your shop a little bit that way which is quite a bit more advanced uh, and, and something that you would actually need to know what you're doing on in order to do it correctly so if you're a beginner probably avoid that and just stick within this size so I'm gonna fill out uh, name email address shop password And do I want to receive notifications by email? Now I'm going to show you something because this probably won't work. So uh, I'd like to show this to you just to show the, that it probably doesn't work and what to do if it doesn't. So I've clicked receive notifications by email. Now this is something that you should read. This option can be blocking, or I'm assuming it means this option can block the progress of you moving forward to the next screen if your mail configuration is wrong. Please disable to move forward to the next step. So let's try it though. So I'm going to click next and nothing's happening. I'm not getting any kind of a progress bar or anything like that. So must be having a problem here. And that's happened every single time I've actually installed PrestaShop. So it's easiest if you just leave it unclicked for now and then you can receive notifications by email later as you set up the admin um, properties in your actual store. So unclick it, click next, and it should work just fine. Okay, now we've gotten to the congratulations screen and uh, tells us our shop name, my name, first and last, the email. And you're going to want to read this too because there's a couple other things that you need to do before you're done. So it says, warning, for more security you must delete the install folder and the readme files. Readme files for French, English, and Spanish. So let's go ahead and go back to our FileZilla or whatever FTP program you're using. I need to reconnect here and get back to where I need to be. Okay, so first thing it says is to delete the install folder. Alright, so let's go back and find the install folder and there it is. So I'm just going to delete Alright, the install folder has been deleted. 
Now we need to delete the README files, French, English, and Spanish. And it should just be in the main directory here, just in the files. So I want to go there, oops, and then be down in this area so I can actually see my files. Uh, here we go, README, English, Spanish, and France, French. So we'll get rid of those. Delete. Yes, I want to delete them. And then we'll go back. Now, there is going to be one other very critical thing that we need to do before we really are done. Um, let's go ahead and go to the back office. Now, this is, this is good. It says, for security reasons, you cannot connect to the back office until after you have deleted the install folder. We've done that. It also says to rename the admin folder. Uh, an example would be renaming it to admin 341. And then we need to access the page with the new URL. So this actual back office login page is the admin folder. So when you type in um, your website and then you type in the folder that takes you to the login page, you're actually going to the admin folder. But it's, you know, it's kind of low security just to leave it as the standard admin. So I'm going to change mine, which I'll change after I do this video again. But let's just say that I'm going to take this admin right here, and I'm going to rename it to admin 001. Okay, that way somebody just can't uh, find your directory just by looking for the admin folder and mess around with your files. So we'll go ahead and rename that. Now it's renamed. Now this is where you actually log in to your PrestaShop back office. So you need to remember that you changed it to admin 001 in this case. So the next thing it tells you to do is access your site with a new URL. Okay, so I'm going to open up a new window here and we're going to see if we can do it. So it should just, just be HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www dot presta training dot com forward slash I'm just going to cheat here a little bit go down there it's no longer the install folder it's actually the admin 001 and this is the modified admin folder so it should take us right to the login screen and thank goodness it did so I'm going to put in my email address. My username. And connect. And there we go. We are now in the back office of our PrestaShop installation. So this completes the video tutorial on how to download and install PrestaShop. In other videos, we'll be looking at all the aspects of your store from adding products, creating manufacturers, uh, setting up shipping rates. So we'll have a very, very thorough analysis of how PrestaShop works and how you can set your store up and make some money with it. So I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial, and I look forward to seeing you next time. This is Kurt Donahue with PrestaTraining.com. Have a great day.